fake news, Clinton bought and paid for Russian propaganda dossier was in fact used to obtain FISA warrants and to surveil members of the Trump campaign. Now, these developments are just the tip of the iceberg, and they are beginning now to snowball, and they will make Watergate look like an insignificant blimp on your radar, historically speaking. Now, you're going to want to hear all these details tonight, plus President Trump. He is blasting the Russia investigation. He is rightly calling it a witch hunt and a Democratic hoax created because Hillary Clinton lost the election. Now, we'll get into all of this and much, much more breaking news in tonight's opening monologue. All right, this is just huge breaking news tonight. Sarah Carter, who will join us in a minute, is reporting, and we have confirmed with three separate sources that the Clinton bought and paid for fake news Russia propaganda dossier was, in fact, used in part to obtain FISA warrants to surveil members of the Trump campaign and Trump transition. Now, this means that Hillary Clinton and the DNC, remember that Donna Brazil said Hillary controlled the DNC? They paid millions and millions of dollars for what is a totally phony document full of Russian lies and propaganda that was then used by the Obama administration to surveil members of an opposition party and incoming president. This is the same dossier that former FBI Director James Comey testified under oath as being salacious and unverified. And that information is only the tip of the iceberg. Sarah Carter reporting, and we are also learning that more shocking information will be coming out in just days that will show systemic FISA abuse. This is the real Russia scandal, the real Russia collusion story. Now, the dossier was used to target an opposition party and criminalize political differences. Now, that's the real story. That's what the media has not and will not cover, and Democrats do not want you to know anything about. But unfortunately, they will be forced to cover the story. All of this is unprecedented in the history of this country. This is a sober moment. You need to understand this. We are on the precipice of one of the largest abuses of power in U.S. American history. And I'm talking about the literal shredding of the U.S. Constitution, your Fourth Amendment rights against unreasonable search and seizure. It is that serious. Now, this new information is confirming what we have now been saying and predicting for months on this show. The powerful tools of intelligence have now been politicized and used to influence a presidential election. Now, make no mistake about this, this scandal will reach the highest levels of the Obama intelligence community, the DOJ, the FBI, and what we're reporting on is only the beginning tonight. We'll talk to Sarah Carter about all the details in a minute. And also tonight, the president continuing to crush the destroy Trump, liberal media, and the left's completely false narrative about Russia collusion. It has now been over a year, and so far, they have zero, zip, nada, Nothing, no evidence of Trump, Russia, collusion. Now, during a press conference today with Norway's prime minister, the president was asked about the Russia investigation and if he would do an interview with special counsel Robert Mueller. Here's his answer. Take a look. There has been no collusion between the Trump campaign and Russians or Trump and Russians. No collusion. When you talk about interviews, uh, Hillary Clinton had an interview where she wasn't sworn in. She wasn't given the oath. They didn't take notes. They didn't record. And it was done on the 4th of July weekend. Uh, that's perhaps ridiculous. And a lot of people looked upon that as being uh, a very serious breach. And it really was. But again, I'll speak to attorneys. I can only say this. There was absolutely no collusion. Everybody knows it. Every committee. I've been in office now for 11 months. For 11 months, they've had this phony cloud over this administration, over our government. And it has hurt our government. It does hurt our government. It's a Democrat hoax that was brought up as an excuse for losing an election that, frankly, the Democrats should have won because they have such a tremendous advantage in the Electoral College. So it was brought up for that reason. But it has been determined that there is no collusion and by virtually everybody. I will say this, I am for massive oil and gas and everything else and a lot of energy. Putin can't love that. I am for the strongest military that the United States ever had. Putin can't love that. But Hillary was not for a strong military, and Hillary, my opponent, was for windmills. 
Now, the president is right on several key points here. First of all, like he has been saying for months, like we have been saying, there is no evidence of Trump-Russia collusion. This has been a conspiracy theory manufactured by the industrial fake news media complex that has been spread night after night, hour after hour, by the likes of CNN and conspiracy TV, MSNBC. And as we have been showing you, the narrative is falling completely flat. So now the media is trying to attack the president, his mental health, which is completely ridiculous, so idiotic for so many reasons. For example, just yesterday, we could all see the president was in full control of that immigration debate at the White House and that he had all of his faculties. But that doesn't stop your media from lying to you. Now, the other key point is the president is making now is that key Democrats, remember, they've all said that they have not seen any evidence of collusion. Don't take my word for it. Let's take their word for it. Well, the, you know, the allegation, of course, is that the Russians and the hacking and dumping of documents in the election um, had uh, essentially relationships with Trump campaign people. But I'm not prepared to say that there's proof you could take to a jury. Do you agree with this conclusion that the president has reached that there was no evidence of collusion? You know, we haven't seen any of that whatsoever, George. Uh, we've been looking and, and showing everything that uh, they possibly have. Uh, that has not led to that. The last time we spoke, Senator, I asked you if you had actually seen evidence of collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians. And you said to me, and I'm quoting you now, you said, not at this time. Has anything changed since uh, we spoke last? Well, not yet. No, it hasn't. I know we need to go soon, but just yes. to be clear, we haven't, there has been no actual evidence yet. No, it has not been. Okay. No, not yet. Now, all of that is reason why President Trump tweeted out today, quote, the single greatest witch hunt in American history continues. There was no collusion. Everybody, including the Democrats, know there was no collusion, and yet on and on it goes. Russia and the world is laughing at the stupidity that they are witnessing. Republicans should finally take control. Make no mistake about it. This is a political witch hunt unlike anything this country has ever seen before. And it continues to be exposed. And as we have now been reporting for months, the special counsel, Robert Mueller, his investigation is nothing but a cesspool, an absolute cesspool of corruption. Members of his team, they don't donate to Republicans, but over 50 grand to Democrats, including giving money to Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. One lawyer actually represented Hillary in one particular case. And none of them contributed to the Trump campaign. Key Mueller prosecutors also have massive, massive conflicts of interest, including Jeannie Ray serving as a lawyer for the Clinton Foundation. This is insanity. It's a partisan investigation. It's meant to unseat a duly elected president that the people voted for. Now, President Trump is also weighing in on the fake news dossier and hammering Senator Feinstein for unilaterally releasing the testimony from Fusion GPS co-founder Glenn Simpson. The president responded also on Twitter. The fact that sneaky Dianne Feinstein, who has on numerous occasions stated that collusion between Trump and Russia has not been found, would release testimony in such an underhanded and possibly illegal way, totally without authorization as a disgrace, must have a tough primary. I don't know about California, but given the new information we're reporting on tonight about the dossier, it is clear Senator Feinstein and the Democrats, they are now tonight trying to create a massive distraction. They want to hide the truth. And you also heard Feinstein admit just a few seconds ago she has personally seen no evidence of Trump-Russia collusion. Remember, that's what this whole investigation was supposed to be about. But since we haven't seen any evidence, Democrats are now desperately trying to change the subject. They don't want you to know that their former candidate, Hillary Clinton, and the administration of their former president, their beloved Barack Obama, was actually targeting the Trump campaign this way. Once all these details come out, and once the dust settles, and all the people who have been screaming about Trump-Russia collusion... They will have a lot of explaining to do, and that includes the media. They also may want to lawyer up a number of them. Joining us now with reaction, Congressman Jim Jordan, Mark Meadows, Fox News contributor Sarah Carter. Sarah, let's start with your report. Let's stay on the facts here. I spoke to three people, two congressional members, one person in the DOJ. They all confirmed at different levels that 100% the dossier was used at least in part one person said, was significantly a part of getting the FISA warrant. What are you reporting tonight? 
I'm reporting the same. Uh, I have spoken to a number of sources, one senior law enforcement official and another in the DOJ, uh, and the dossier was absolutely used as part of the FBI's ability to gain a warrant uh, to basically spy on members of the Trump campaign. So this was this was definitely used as evidence. It was part and partial to other evidence, I believe, that they were trying to collect, but the dossier was definitely used and what's concerning here Sean is the fact that we know coming from the mouths of members senior members of the FBI who testified both Comey and McCabe that the only part of the dossier that they were able to confirm that was actually factual was that Carter Page had actually traveled to Moscow um, everything else in the dossier apparently they did not talk about that they did not confirm it's unsubstantiated or they found out to be false so this is very alarming and I think that there are a number of sources that are alarmed about this, particularly people within law enforcement uh, who are concerned that they were using this dossier uh, to, to find a way to look into the Trump campaign. All right, let me go to Congressman Meadows. You're the chairman of the Freedom Caucus, Jim, of course, the former chairman, so I must, I must go to the chairman, the current chairman first. <laughs> That's fine. Are you getting the same confirmation that we are getting? You know, obviously, Sean, uh, talking about what happens in a confidential setting is not something that members of Congress are allowed to do. I will say this. There is a growing body of members who believe that uh, this dossier was a, a significant factor, as you were mentioning, some saying it's a signif significant factor in terms of the FISA warrant. But I, I think that there's a, a broader question here. Why would the FBI use a Democrat paid for dossier to actually uh, surveil another campaign? But wait a minute. You know, isn't it worse than that? Isn't this it is worse fraud than that. upon the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court? I was talking to Greg Jarrett earlier today, and a lawyer, an officer of the court, violating the law by knowingly using deceptive documents to deceive the court. And we got to remember, Fusion GPS never verified the dossier, ever. Well, exactly. And so it, it's not only troubling there, but I think it's time. And Jim Jordan and I are here tonight to call on our leadership to say that what we need to do is let every member have access, not only to that FISA application, but to all the outstanding work that Chairman Nunes has put forth in terms of gathering documents. It's time that every member has the access to those documents. And so we're calling on our leadership uh, to make that available. And that would mean the speaker. That would mean Kevin McCarthy, Jim Jordan. Yes, I mean, Mark's exactly right. If, if members of Congress get to see this information, we think the, that, that the course will grow even more and say, now it's time to declassify this, make this public so the American people can understand once and for all what exactly happened. Remember, Sean, it's today, one year anniversary from when BuzzFeed first printed that entire dossier, that disproven, salacious, unverified dossier, as Jim Comey testified and said it was, one year ago today that they printed it, a year and a half ago that it looks like they used it to go to the FISA court Jim, to get the warrants. Let's make that available for members of if Congress If you look at the contents, see. what do you see? You know, uh, triple, double, quadruple hearsay, none of which is reliable yep. or even admissible in a court. But if that's no. you, if a Hillary Clinton bought and paid for Russian propaganda dossier Sean, is used to obtain a right. FISA warrant? There, what happens there been, then? There's three fundamental questions. Did the FBI pay Christopher Steele, the author of the dossier? Did they use that Stoyle, work product one question at as a time. Basis? Sarah, I'm hearing from sources they that either it. Comey or McKay paid. Do you hear the same? I'm hearing, I'm hearing both stories, Sean, and that's why we have to verify this. We're hearing there's a possibility that they did pay. I'm hearing from other sources that they did not pay. And we need to clarify that. And, and that's a very important question. And the that's Congress why we should want be the asking documents this. Released. All right, Jim, go ahead. Back to you. what's point no, number two? Sarah's right. That's why we want the documents. That's why we want the documents made available to members of Congress. We all have the same clearance. We're all entitled to see this. Make it available. Give us the information. Devin Nunes, as, Chair, as Chairman Meadows has said, has done great work in getting these documents now coming to Intel. Make these available for all members of Congress to see. And then I think you'll see more members say, you know what? 
We need to make this available for the American people so that they can see what actually took place here. And if all our suspicions and all the evidence points to one thing, did that actually happen? That's sure what it looks like, but let's find out for certain. All right, Sarah, let's go back. Fusion GPS never verified the dossier. Remember, they tried to withhold who paid for the dossier and banking records associated with the dossier. They've not exactly been truthful, honest, and helpful. And no, this is haven't. what they deal in. No, they haven't. And actually, it wasn't until October when the Washington Post first revealed that the DNC and the Hillary Clinton campaign had paid millions of dollars to Fusion GPS to basically go after this Trump-Russia collusion narrative. And that's when they hired Christopher Steele. And that's when Christopher Steele went back to some of his old cohorts, uh, people that he had, he had made contact with when he was a former spy in the FSB. And this is why these concerns have been raised. I mean, the Russians could have very easily and according to my sources in the intelligence community, known right away that it was being paid for by the DNC and the Clinton campaign. They could have used it for their own propaganda purposes, and it appears that they have. And now what we're seeing is, what was the, what was the amount of the systemic abuse? This Was there systemic abuse with the FISA warrants? Is does it this, just related to the Hillary Clinton campaign, or does this go beyond? And it would render anything they've got inadmissible. The media has been trying to sell this New York Times report. Greg Jarrett made a good point to me earlier today that that in fact that it was the New York Times reporting that Papadopoulos uh, mouthed off to some Australian diplomat that he had heard that the Russians had dirt on Hillary. That's not even admissible. That's like triple hearsay. Well, Sean, that, that, that's exactly why we need to go ahead and be transparent with this. Senator Feinstein started this yesterday when yep. she released this whole Fusion GPS testimony. I say let's go ahead and release it all to all the members. If there is nothing that is of national security interest, then let's release it to the American people and let them be the judge. This, there is no collusion. There's nothing to hide, so let's get it out there. Jim? No, you're right, Sean. In this story in the New York Times a week and a half ago, this was this was laughable. Four unnamed sources said, "Wait you know, a minute, this a is guy, basically let me just I don't need to interrupt. A guy in Russia tells a guy in London who tells yeah. Papadopoulos, who tells an Australian diplomat, who tells the FBI. Yeah, a 28-year-old okay, shooting, shooting, shooting his mouth off in a bar. Now that's the reason they launched the Russian. It wasn't the dossier that we've been talking about for the last year. Come on, this is like pay no attention right. to the man behind the curtain. That, that is just a laughable <laughs> story. We know what caused this. It's the stuff we've been talking Here's, about. I am hearing, and I'm just getting rumblings of this, that some of the details are that we are beyond our imagination in terms of FISA abuse. Sarah Carter, I, well, I see Mark Meadows is shaking his head. Are you agreeing, Mark? I am. I'm agreeing. I, you know, some of the things that will be coming out are so unbelievable that the FBI and DOJ would actually allow it to happen. And I would also say there are other agencies within the So we're over the target. We've been right all along. You're over the target. And let me just tell you, we're focusing in, homing in on that target. Well, and it's American time people, now. We need to know the truth. Sarah, last word for you tonight. Yes, the American people deserve the truth. They need to know the truth. They need to be able to find resolution to this so that the administration and our nation can move forward and that they're not stuck in this for another year. And the media has been wrong the entire time. Jim, you're smiling. You were last comment. We'll give no, to no, you. Go ahead. We want to be no, fair. Sarah, Sarah was great. Uh, look, we'll let, just, let, it, let members see it. Let members see it. I agree. And then, then let's just let the, the public see it. it. Exactly. I agree. All right, thank you all. This is scary, actually, in a lot of ways. We will follow this every step of the way. When we come back, major federal immigration raids were conducted all across the country today, even in California, and the Trump administration says they're only getting started. Much more straight ahead. Would you be willing to sign an immigration deal that ultimately does not include funding for the border wall, or would that be a red no. line for you? No. No, no, it's got to include the wall. We need the wall for security. We need the wall for safety. We need the wall for stopping the drugs from pouring in. Uh, I would imagine that the people in the room, both Democrat and Republican, uh, I really believe they're going to come up with a solution to the DACA problem, which has been going on for a long time, and maybe beyond that immigration as a whole. But any solution has to include the wall, because without the wall, it all doesn't work. That was the president earlier today repeating his commitment to secure the border first. Many Democrats have now vowed to fight President Trump's efforts for secure borders, but that has not always been their position. 
ah, let's go back in the Hannity memory banks and look at some top Democrats and how they have flipped and flopped and flailed as it relates to the border and illegal immigration. Some of them even sound like President Trump today. Take a look. I voted uh, uh, numerous times when I was a senator to spend money to build a, uh, a barrier to try to prevent um, illegal immigrants from coming in. Um, and I do think you have to control your borders. Where it was necessary, we did support some fencing. Where it was necessary, we did add border patrol agents. We have done what by any fair estimate would have to conclude is a good job, quote, securing the border. People who enter the United States without our permission are illegal aliens, and illegal aliens should not be treated the same as people who entered the U.S. legally. The American people will never accept immigration reform unless they truly believe that their government is committed to ending future illegal immigration. The president's decision to end DACA was heartless and it was brainless. If this order stands, hundreds, hundreds of thousands of families will be ripped apart. Tens of thousands of American businesses will lose hardworking employees. Those who enter our country illegally and those who employ them disrespect the rule of law. And because we live in an age where terrorists are challenging our borders, we cannot allow people to pour into the U.S. undetected, undocumented, and unchecked. If there are disruptions in these countries, if there's conflict, if there's bad governance, if there's war, if there's poverty, in this new world that we live in, we can't isolate ourselves. We can't hide behind a wall. Somewhat laughable, the media is accusing the president of going soft on illegal immigration. All they want to do is separate him from his base. Well, today, ICE agents, they raided 98 7-Eleven stores. They arrested 21 people in what is now being called the biggest crackdown on a company suspected of hiring illegals since President Trump took office. Here with reaction, we have former Secret Service agent Dan Bongino and Catalina magazine publisher Kathy Aru is with us. You saw the tape of Chuck Schumer and Hillary Clinton and all these Democrats. Don't they sound like Trump today? Can you be intellectually honest and just admit, yeah, <laughs> they sound like Trump today? No, I mean, Trump is talking about a no? wall. No, they didn't. It's about these same people voted to build 700 miles of wall in 2013. Well, the, well immigration well, what, five is years ago. We're at a net zero today. Immigration is not a problem today. From 2000 if you to voted 2017, in 20, If you gone. voted in 2013 to build 700 miles of wall, how is it racist today? Well, we're talking Does it mean that they were racist we're then? Talking, we're not saying it's racist. We're just saying it's different. Immigration is different. It, right now, it's yeah, an all-time low. What's so different? From 2000 to 2017, there's 80, 80 no, percent less actually, people crossing the border. No, actually, the biggest the border. change was in the last year. Dan. Yeah, it's interesting. You said it's not a problem. If it's not a problem, why are you arresting people in 7-Eleven? What, what are you arresting for? 21? For stealing chiclets? 21 but, people? I mean, no, no, there's actually tens of, tens of millions of people who are probably in the country illegally based on any reasonable estimate. Do you believe estimate. in the rule of law? Of all I got a question. Do you believe in the rule of law? Absolutely. Do you believe that people that don't respect our laws and sovereignty, that they should be rewarded with the ability to stay here just because they didn't wait their turn? I think they were working their jobs. I don't think they were breaking any rules. I think they were probably What about very those productive. people that do commit crimes? I actually sat in on a security briefing in Texas alone, and in a short period of time, right. seven years, there were 600 and some odd thousand crimes committed against Texans by well, illegal immigrants. Uh, well, we're saying these uh, 7-Eleven employees. I'm though, talking about, the, the, I just mentioned Texas. Well, what about 600? Well, and they will be dealt with, and they were dealt with. Some and some not. Some are actually, you know, found their way to a sanctuary city, and they get to stay. No, that can't be. Well, exactly what, right. a, what about my wife? She's a legal immigrant. Why, why did we have to wait in line behind people who came in here legally? Well, there aren't enough actually work visas in this country. No, 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 to no. I'm serious. It's a serious question because I went right. through it. We paid ten thousand right. dollars for a lawyer. We had I'll to focus wait. Focus on this question. And, I, I'm asking you a serious question. Yeah. Why should my wife, who is a successful working class web developer in America, right. who did nothing but provide to this country and got her citizenship the right way, right. why should we have to wait if the message from the she, Democrat Party to illegals is, right. hey, citizenship's an intergalactic no, right. No, You're no, all welcome no. to come no, here. No, she was able to get her her visa and was able to stay in this country because there are visas. Why wait? 
possible for her. Why not just come here illegally? Well, well she could if have done borders it. If our borders are open, do you worry about Al-Qaeda? Yeah, exactly. Well, do you worry about Al-Qaeda crossing the border with bad Absolutely. intentions? Absolutely. So we should put a wall maybe in uh, Canada, right? Uh, up in Canada? I have that no problem border? with that. That border? I don't have a problem. Well, Trump isn't talking but about that. But we know, that. That, but we know that a major influx of immigrants are coming from the southern border. Why, why, why are you against the? Why are you those against? Those who are a threat are coming question. from the northern border. Why are you against protecting a border? I've been to a drug warehouse. You ever been to the southern border? I've been around the southern border. I've yes. been there eleven times, just on the border from yes. the Rio Grande to San Diego. Right. You ever see a drug warehouse that's bigger than this studio floor to ceiling drugs? Who are those drugs targeting? Yeah, well, luckily it's at an all-time low, so right now we don't have an immigration Who are those problem. drugs targeting? People in the United States who American need drugs. American children. Should we stop that? Do we have a moral obligation to stop that? Sean, if we don't, we don't have a country. What's the point of a country without borders? Your country is just a suggestion then. And it's fascinating. I love this talking point about the northern border. When we just saw the Josh Meyer Politico, and I'm not a big fan of Politico, but it was a wonderful piece, expose, about the Obama administration letting Hezbollah run drugs and money across, by the way, the southern border, while they looked the other way when the DEA said, hey, we got a problem here. Yeah, but I'm sure so let's not... Su <laughs> she supports probably the Iranian deal, don't you, Obama? <laughs> <laughs> did, you support, did you support the Iranian deal with 150 billion in cash and other we're, currencies? We're, we're talking about the borders and immigration. I asked you that question. Did we're you, talking, did you, I bet you supported Obama, I, didn't you? I, I, I'm not saying that I supported Obama. Did you support on that, that decision to give the mullahs that money? I, I cannot say I supported that decision. Did you not I can't say it? I supported him 100% on all of his I'm positions. Asking, did, do you think he did the right thing? No. He did the wrong thing. I, I'm not saying I supported him on you can't every answer. decision. You sound confused. No, I'm not confused. I'm not no, saying it that sounds I supported. Confusing. I did support did him on what Did you support the decision to give the Iranian mullahs 150 billion? Well, if we're talking about immigration, was it a good idea or a bad idea? Immigration and Cuban immigration was not a problem in our country. Wow. So good I did idea not support or bad him idea? on that. So I didn't support Obama on absolutely everything. Was that a good idea or a bad idea? It was his idea at the time. It was his idea. Sure was it a good one? Someone should tell the Iranians we have an Iran deal, by the way. Yeah. They, maybe they'll be read in on the program. Unbelievable. That's politics. When we come back, Ed Henry has a live report how the president is now going on offense against the Russia collusion investigation. So much more on this busy breaking news night. The president, he went on offense today against his critics and the phony Russia investigation. Ed Henry has a live report from the White House tonight with insight into the president's strategy. Ed, what's going Sean, on? Sean, good to see you. What the president's advisors tell me is he's getting fed up about playing so much defense for so long. And so one day after his personal attorney, Michael Cohn, tweeted out enough is enough and filed those defamation suits against both BuzzFeed and Fusion GPS and its co-founder, Glenn Simpson, over what Michael Cohn called the phony dossier, the president started today tweeting about Democrat Dianne Feinstein leaking that transcript of Simpson's testimony. President declaring, quote, the fact that sneaky Dianne Feinstein, who has on numerous occasions stated that collusion between Trump Russia has not been found, would release testimony in such an underhanded and possibly illegal way, totally without authorization, is a disgrace, must have tough primary, he said, referring to her electoral prospects back home. Then he used a joint news conference there with the Prime Minister of Norway to reiterate his claim that the U.S. looks bad on the world stage because of the congressional probes, because of special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation. And the president hedged on a one-on-one -on -one with Robert Mueller, saying when there's no collusion, it's unlikely there would need to be an actual interview, suggesting also that Hillary Clinton was treated with kid gloves by the FBI when she was interviewed over her email server. Watch. There is collusion, but it's really with the Democrats and the Russians far more than it is with the Republicans and the Russians. So the witch hunt continues. But I will say this, I am for massive oil and gas and everything else and a lot of energy. Putin can't love that. I am for the strongest military that the United States ever had. Putin can't love that. But Hillary was not for a strong military. And Hillary, my opponent, was for windmills and she was for other types of energy that don't have the same capacities. Now, you can see another key piece of the president's strategy there, trying to suggest that his actual actions as commander in chief do not fit the narrative that he has been soft on Russian President Vladimir Putin. It's worth noting that today uh, the president 
also had a phone call with his South Korean counterpart who praised the president for his tough stance against Kim Jong-un. And in fact, remember, critics had questioned the president's tough rhetoric, some of those tweets. But now the dictator is saying that he's going to send a delegation to South Korea for the Winter Olympics, a thaw perhaps, although it's still very early in that controversy as well, Sean. All right, great reporting at Henry, live Good at the White you. House tonight. Thank you. And joining us now with reaction, Salem Radio. He's nationally syndicated talk show host Larry Elder, civil rights attorney Daryl Parks. All right, Daryl, let's, let's put your attorney hat on for just a second here. So it took a year, but we find out. Hillary, her campaign and the DNC she ran, they spent millions and millions of dollars on what turns out to be a false, salacious Russian propaganda dossier to influence the American people. Was the same woman that fixed the primary against, against Bernie. And not only that, we're learning today that, in fact, that dossier played a role, perhaps a significant role, in obtaining a warrant from the FISA court for surveillance of the candidate and incoming President Donald Trump and other people. As an attorney, I assume you believe in the Constitution and the Fourth Amendment. You should be pretty outraged yes, tonight. Do. Because that's false pretenses, well, isn't it? That's fraud before gotta, a surveillance court, much court so. isn't it? Very much so. And you got to be very concerned about subpoenas that are obtained under false pretenses, Sean, so you'd have to be concerned. The American people should be concerned if that was the case. Yeah, and the fraud was upon the Foreign uh, Intelligence Surveillance Court, Larry Elder. How significant is this now, that a bought and paid for dossier well, full of Russian lies was used to obtain a warrant to look into a, a president-elect and company? Well, it's huge. You and I would not be having this conversation if that weren't the case. Uh, and if that fake uh, dossier was, was the basis for which uh, they got the FISA warrant uh, and were able to surveil all of these aides for Donald Trump, it, it's awful. And the American people can see this, Sean. They see the, the double standard. They see the pass that Hillary got for having her server in her basement for uh, deleting 33,000 emails after they were under subpoena. Nothing happened regarding the Clinton Foundation pay-to-play stuff. The American people see all of this. And Donald Trump has a lot of allies in Congress and a lot of allies in the punditry class, including people uh, from academia like uh, Alan Dershowitz and Jonathan Turley. So as far as I'm concerned, let this thing play out. Whatever report comes out, it will be immediately discredited by people on the right. People on the left already want Donald Trump, Donald Trump impeached. It's not going to have any impact. He's not going to be impeached. He's not going to be thrown out right. of office. He's going to be around for seven more years. Uh, Deal I, with that, it. That, by the way, that drives people <laughs> on the left they're crazy. All right. And, and as a person that is a lawyer and believes in the rule of law, I'm sure, Daryl, you never heard of a case where they're writing an exoneration months before they actually did the real investigation and interviewed the people involved. I'm talking about Comey and Trump hater Peter Strzok and Hillary lover Peter Strzok, that they literally were writing Hillary's exoneration and they hadn't interviewed anybody until months later. Does that sound like the, you... the, the type of justice system you're used to? Because I doubt it. Not at all. I mean, that's not the kind of justice anybody wants to see. We, I think the American public is ready to see some closure to all these investigations very soon, and hopefully we'll get some closure very soon. And, Daryl, you can say, so basically, Hannity, you're right, and I was wrong, and Hillary rigs everything. She rigs <laughs> her elections. She tries to rig the general election with phony Russian propaganda, and she has her buddies, Comey and Strzok, rig her exoneration to keep her in the race and not thrown in jail. Larry, last word. I, I don't think she did all and this. Sean, and Sean, and Sean... Let's not forget that James Comey admitted that Loretta Lynch, the attorney general at the time, came up to him and told him, can you call the, in the Clinton investigation a matter and not an investigation? What is that? Did anybody accuse the, the uh, Obama administration of obstruction of justice when Obama publicly said he didn't believe Hillary had an intent to hurt the country? Intent is not an element of the statute. Why wasn't Obama brought up for obstruction of justice charges? Double standard. Double standard. All right. Thank you both. We appreciate it. Still a lot more to come. Unhinged rant from Robert De Niro, Jesse Waters, and Jessica Tarlov up next. Straight ahead. All right, it's been a rough year for the elites in Hollywood. They have been forced to endure a new political force that's called President Donald Trump. And sadly, under all of the stress, some of these liberal snowflakes are starting to break down. That includes actor Robert De Niro, who went on this anti-Trump rant last night during a speech honoring, oh, the ever-so-talented Mer Meryl Streep. Watch this. Today, the world is suffering from the real Donald Trump. 
Come on, let's go. What are we talking about? Let's clap for that. This idiot is the president. The guy is a fool. Come on. Our government today, with the prompting of our baby in chief, has in chief, I call him. Hero and his left wing friends in Hollywood, they're not alone, as we have been reporting right here on this program. Of course, the Destroy Trump media is also becoming unhinged, including conspiracy theorists. Over at MSNBC, Chris Matthews, Mr. Thrill Up His Leg, who last night compared President Trump's family to Uday and Kuse. Remember, Saddam Hussein's kids here with the reaction is Fox News contributor Jessica Tarlow, the co-host of the hit show The Five, host of Water's World. It's his world. We live in it. <laughs> Jesse, is right, it's your world. It we... is my world, Sean. But now I'm being hanitized, so I'm a little nervous. Uh, you're fine. You're good. Uh, I was on your show, so it works out. All right, Jessica, there is a level of vitriol and hate that even you should be uncomfortable with. And as a liberal, you might even be a little embarrassed about. I'm not really that embarrassed when you think about how people, including the president, talked about Barack Obama. He said he founded ISIS. He was a birther. Not that Obama is an American. Hillary Clinton has Parkinson's disease. She should be in jail. And if you, that's coming from someone who ended up as the president of the United States of America. I think we Hillary can talk should about be in Ted jail. Nugent, I, I, who was invited up. to the White lock House, where he called him a subhuman mongrel and said that his machine gun should be in his mouth, or he should suck on his right, machine gun. He came gun. with your talking points. Very nice. Nicely done. No, it's not. I mean, no, they're, they're uh, thank you. I did write them about. out. But I the wanted reality to make sure I didn't forget. Is, there's never been, and this is something the president said today. He goes, This investigation, phony over a year now, has hurt the country. And there's still no evidence, Jesse. Yeah, it's an embarrassment to the country, and the left's continued to embarrass themselves. But as a very stable genius that he is, he has this <laughs> gift, Sean, where yeah. he um, he brings out the best in people, but he also brings out the worst in people, and he's done that with Hollywood and in the media. You have De Niro sounding like a sloppy drunk, like he's been hanging out with the DNC chairman Tom Perez too long. Madonna's getting visited by the Secret Service. Kathy Griffin's beheading people. She's getting fired, and then the media, the same thing. People are getting fired for tanking the stock market. They're getting sued for slander. So. He has this ability where his enemies destroy themselves. They're screaming, they're crying, they're wearing these pink little hats. This, listen, I know Donald Trump. Yeah. I've known him long before he ever ran for president. He is a funny guy. Yeah. And he does this, okay, you want to hit me? I'm going to hit you and he's going to have some fun. Everybody expects Jessica, he's going he's gonna to one day wake up and say, oh, I'm going to be exactly, I'm going to bow and kiss the ring of the mullahs in Iran. It's not going to happen. Or kiss the ring of Kim Jong-un and I'm going to give them all billions of dollars and beg them to like us. That's not going to happen. That's not who the American people voted for. Is there anything you see about Donald Trump that you say, wow, the economy really turned around or standing up to murdering dictators is actually good? Do you agree with that? Well, standing up to murdering dictators is definitely good. I'm not sure that I love his approach to dealing with Kim Jong Un, but you know it's great if North Should Korea and South Korea like are Clinton having a conversation. Did and tell, That's a good deal for America. Hey, well, <laughs> we do that. I, that's good. I can't do that uh, imitation as well as you can. But okay, I want listen, to talk to all the totally hot chicks separate. out in Kiwi Land. I, I just, him. I have to say to you guys sitting here remote, which makes this more difficult, but sitting here and listening to you talk about all the liberal crybabies when conservatives were up in arms that pre President Obama wore a tan suit, for instance. Give me one economic so statistic that got better under Obama. I mean, it was a terrible it... suit, Jessica. Everybody agrees. Come on. Oh, no, they don't agree. I actually like that suit a lot, Jesse. Um, <laughs> what did it's Obama just, do so in the economy? Hang on. What did Obama, the name one big statistic that you say, wow, Obama did a great job here. Oh, well, the number of people who got health insurance because of Obamacare. A hundred percent, there are problems with the program. How about the millions program, that lost health insurance and had to pay But millions of Americans had health insurance what they who did it. What are you talking about? What am I talking about? All right, let me go facts. to Jesse. Go ahead. Okay, listen. Um, why, this, De Niro hasn't condemned Harvey Weinstein. But he's out there, you know, ripping Trump a new one. So we know where his priorities are. Also, De Niro lives in L.A. Little Rocket Man's got missiles aimed right at L.A. And because of all the fire and the fury rhetoric, now the North's come to the table and started talking to the South. So I think a lot of the stuff that he gets criticized for, they don't like his style. But look at the results. He's defeated ISIS. 
He has the stock market the through the roof. Well, economy is doing great. If he's an idiot, like De Niro says, mm -hmm. well, that doesn't seem like an idiot. And I don't know. Hillary couldn't beat an idiot. So what does that make her? Jessica, good point. I, Jesse, wh check What does for that him. make her? The most qualified person to one, run for the presidency in a very long time. Actually, that's what Hillary Clinton is. And I'm really curious if the things that Donald Trump said about President Obama or about okay, Hillary Clinton well, were said Here, I want by to ask you this. Does it bother sorry, you that the Hillary bought and paid, paid for phony Russian propaganda dossier was used to obtain a FISA warrant, as we are reporting it's, tonight? I, I understand your reporting, and I, I, I did see the segment. I'm going to have to spend a little bit more time with that before I'm going with that. If it, it's it does true, not seem to I'm me telling you that that true. is what happened is here. That sound, and there are many who are not saying that like that is the case. There's you. no smoking gun here. Actually, what? there is, but in the, the House Intel Committee has it all. Well, Jessica. then I guess well, I mean, we'll listen, Hillary paid for fake dirt from the Russians that started the whole wiretapping. I mean, that's a pretty big story, if you ask me. I didn't say it wasn't a big story. I just said that I wasn't you sure You don't that trust this was Sean Hannity's reporting, Jessica? Yeah, really? Come on, Jessica. and you're on his show. What do you... I understand. By the I'm way, saying this, I saw this, is, this is Water's world. We all live in it. <laughs> just don't throw it. the football at me. Hang on. I don't have a ton. Oh, I don't know. All right. When we come back, the video of the day and James O'Keefe. You're going to love what he reports on Twitter straight ahead. All right. Now for our video of the day, James O'Keefe, Project Veritas. He's out with a brand new undercover report. This time he's targeting a senior engineer from Twitter to determine whether or not the social media giant is actively working against President Trump. Now, we've not independently verified the contents, but we'll let you decide. Take a look at this pretty shocking undercover footage. Take a look. The other thing, too, is that we're more than helping. We're more than happy to help uh, the Department of Justice in their little investigation. Okay. <laughs> Basically, give him every single tweet that he's posted. Okay. Even the ones he's deleted. Okay. Any direct messages. Good. Any mentions. Oh yeah. So it's. I'm glad that you're doing that. Like something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, something uh, needs yeah. to be done. Yeah. And you should look at junior and senior, senior and see what's what's in there. You know what I mean? Have you seen? There, there's a there's a reason why we have subpoena. 